Hey, we're in the lab again today because we're going to be talking about the grow tower. Now some of you have seen a short, I put out a little short video when I built it and I just showed you that I had it done but I hadn't showed how I built it. So this one we're going to talk about that. Right up front I'm going to go ahead and get through the materials and tell you what that costs. Okay, so materials. Obviously, first we have the buckets, right? I got four buckets. Now, in the video, it's the orange buckets, right? So don't everybody get excited and be like, oh, those aren't food grade and everything. I did order food grade, but they did not have these in. Uh, the inventory said there was 50 of them in the store. They weren't really there, or nobody knew where they were. And the lids weren't there either, so I had to order it online, and they just came in today. In fact, I just came back from the store. So I'm going to build another one. We might change the design up a little, but it will have food grade. So if I hear comments saying, you know, oh, it's not food grade and, and, and starts going off on things like that, I'll know that you didn't watch the video that you just saw the picture. Okay, so we're going to build our next one with the food grade buckets. But the one that you see right now is the orange one. And I also got some buckets from Lowe's. Those are the blue ones. I'm going to build a small one for Keeley. I think we're going to try strawberries or something in there. So all kinds of things we're doing, but this is the, the first one, okay? Now, let's go through the breakdown. First off is the buckets. I got four five-gallon buckets at $4.98 a piece, and that came out to $19.92. Of course, we had to have the lids. I got four lids at $2.48 a piece, and that was $9.92. Got a pump off Amazon. It's around $20. Bucks. That's going to be give or take a couple bucks, depending on which pump you get. A uh, half-inch vinyl tube, six foot long, $5.94. The sprinkler head, $2.27. The riser was a whopping $0.35. Cents. I got an elbow adapter for $0.97. Cents. And to hold the buckets together, I used quarter-inch nuts and bolts. I got 20 nuts and bolts for $3.84. Then I got quarter inch washers to go with them. That was $2.56. And two pool noodles that came out to $2.50. They used to be a dollar a piece, but now the dollar tree is the dollar twenty-five tree, so it came out to $2.50 plus tax, right? So everything grand total was $68.27 plus tax. Like I said, depending on where you live. So that's the cost breakdown. Now that's what I got just initially, just thinking, you know, what I wanted to build. I went up to the store and I bought some things and one thing you're going to see in it is a sprinkler head and what else did I say that elbow adapter was 97 cents they didn't have a straight one which if you could get a straight one which I found later so you'll see this in there so when you see a little elbow adapter a 90 degree elbow adapter it should be a straight one but inside the video I had that so um, we'll talk about this at the end of the video. I did get some things that are improvements to it that they didn't have right when I first went to build this, but I found it later. So I'm going to go back in there after it quits raining and put the stuff in there. Alrighty. So let's put it together, right? All right. First off, I started with the lids because that's where all the water has to go through and everything. Basically the buckets are just holding either the nutrients or the plants, right? And this is kind of where everything is happening. So I wanted to figure out the, the lids. So I put them on top of each other. I stacked it up. And I figure if I want the water to be coming down. And this is a lot of input from you guys too. Um, you want the water to be going around the edge where the plants are, right? It doesn't have to be dropping right down in the middle. So each one of these, you know, you could just cut the entire top out. And leave enough room, you know, for your buckets to stack on top of each other. But there'd be a lot of rain and rain there'll be a lot of water coming down the middle which it really doesn't need that it needs to be coming down a few inches around the sides right so that's what we're going to go ahead and take a drill i use a quarter inch drill bit you guys can use whatever size drill bit you want if it's a smaller drill bit you're gonna have to drill a lot more holes if it's a bigger drill bit you drill a little less okay so you're gonna see me place it on top of a bunch of cardboard that's so when i drill through the last one i don't drill into my table and I taped them all together so I can drill all three at one time. Now you're going to have four lids. You're going to want to drill holes in three. Don't drill the holes in the last one. That's going to be your one on the top. So we're just going to drill holes in three. 
And when we work on the buckets, we're only going to work on three buckets too because the last bucket's going to be on the bottom, right? And that's what holds your nutrients. So we're not going to really do too much. There's one small thing that we have to do to it, but that's it. So basically, we're working with three buckets. All right, so you drill all those holes. And after you drill them all out, you want to clean this out very good. So if the drill bit left a bunch of little gnarly bits on there, you want to clean all that up and get all that off of there, okay? And then wash your lids off really good because all this stuff can clog up your pump. Okay, then the next thing you need to do is drill a hole down the center for our tubing to go through. Now we got half inch vinyl tubing. It's half inch inner diameter and 5 8 inch outer diameter. So I've got a 5 8 inch drill bit and we're going to drill a 5 8 inch hole right in the center of two of your, of three. So we're going to drill a 5 8 inch hole right in the center of three of your bucket lids. Okay, now that that's done, I've got the riser that we're going to put on here. And it's just a little bit bigger, even though this is, you know, for half inch pipe and that, you know, the fitting itself is actually a little, a little bigger. And the 5 8 inch hole is just a little small. So I just hit it with the drill bit a little bit to open it up. Just do a very little bit. You don't want it too big. I just have it a tiny bit to where I can actually thread that riser right onto it. Now this might not be the best way to do it. If you can get a nut or something that fits onto the sprinkler um, risers, then you can put a couple of nuts on there and it'll hold it a little tighter. But it just screwed in there right for me and fit just fine. Now here's where we put the adapter on the bottom. And like I said, this is the 90 degree elbow. This is all I had. And if you, if you can't find anything, if you can only get the 90 degree elbow too, when you put the tubing on, you want to make sure that it doesn't crimp up because that'll stop the water flow. So it's got to be nice, easy curve around here. Don't make sure it doesn't crimp. All right, so you saw that's the 90 degree one. Here is the straight. There we go. All right, so that's going to go right on the bottom of the riser and it goes straight down and then you don't have to worry about your tubing being bent so that's just one thing like I said I got a little impatient trying to build it so that's on there this the riser you see on that video is only that big right because I started with a sprinkler head to put up on the top we're gonna talk about that a little bit at, at the end of the video so stick around okay now let's start working on the buckets now the way I'm doing it, I'm, I'm cutting the bottoms out of them and I'm putting them together first before I drill holes for the plants because I wanted to put it together and kind of stand it up and, and see it and, and then decide on my uh, plant spacing. You at home, you can do it any way you want, okay? So, first thing we did was cut a hole in the bottom. Now, I just did it easy. I just drilled a pilot hole. And I just ran my jigsaw around the edge. I just kept the top corner of my jigsaw on the little lip. And I just kept it nice and even all the way around. Cut all three of them like that. Okay, now next, we've got your lids, and we want to attach our lids to the bottom of our buckets. So what I did was, now that we have all these holes on here already, go ahead and flip your bucket upside down, put your lid on it, find a hole, and drill your quarter inch drill bit, drill right through, and then get your quarter inch nuts bolts get a nut a bolt and two washers and put it through that one and that'll hold everything in place then you can go through completely opposite of it 180 degrees opposite of it drill through another one of those holes put another nut bolt washer on that then you've got two of those and then you can drill the other three or other two rather on the other two uh quadrants so you've got you went 180 over here so put one over at 90 and one over at 270 and then you'll have four nuts and bolts in there with the washers. All 
right? It's not that hard. Now as for the bucket, one little modification we have to make is I cut a little notch out right at the top and it's just got to be big enough for a pump, the wire to come out. Now we want most of this to be filled up with nutrients so you don't want this down too low. You want to get it as high as possible so you can have as much nutrients in here as possible. Uh, you can cut a little notch, you don't want to cut it too small because this lid has a close. So make sure you, when you cut your notch it just goes down just far enough for your, your lid to close and for it not to pinch on that cord. Alright, so after I had it all together I decided that I was going to put five plants in each row and I was going to put two rows on each bucket. So that was going to give me ten holes on each bucket. And I'm using a one and three quarter inch hole saw is just because that's one that I have. My two inch one is on my jig on uh, the one that I'm making the downspouts for. The ones that everybody's ordering, the link's down in the description below if you want one of those. Um, so I just left that on my drill press. So I had a one and three quarter inch since we're using pool noodles and we're not worrying about neck cups and, and fittings and all of that. I just used one and three quarter. I just wanted to show you guys that you don't have to stress out and try to get the exact same size. That this is just a hole and the pool noodle is just holding your plants in place. Okay? So, it, to drill these holes, all I did was, I figured I was going to go around, there's two feet, so I took a piece of tape, two feet long, put a mark right in the center, and then a mark six inches out, and a mark six inches out on one side, and a mark six inches out, and six inches out on the other side, so that gave us five marks, and I put it on the bucket, and on the Home Depot bucket I had a line that I could go to, you know, over here if you got this white bucket you're just going to have to measure down from the top say like two and a half three inches and measure up just whatever is going to be aesthetic to you wherever you want it and go ahead and mark with a marker those five spots pull your tape off go down to your bottom mark put that on there mark your five holes All right easy peasy now i just chose that because I don't want to crowd the plants too much when we first start this. Um, I want to see how the plants do. This isn't like I, I just want to take a picture and, and have a bunch of plants crowded in here and go, look what I did. I really want to see how the plants do. I want to see, you know, there's going to be 30 plants here for five gallons of nutrients. You know, if I put these closer together, like half as much, and I put 60 plants, there's going to be 60 plants drinking out of five gallons of nutrients. So, I'm going to start off with 30 plants, you guys. You can do whatever you want, okay? Because that's what we're doing. We're just experimenting, right? We're going to see how it goes. I'm just using my best intuition. You guys can do it that way. Or you can wait and see how this does in a couple of weeks and decide for yourself what you want to do. All right, now when we drill these holes out, I go ahead and drill a pilot hole in each one of them. And then I come back with my saw and I always drill through the plastic with my saw in reverse. And some people out there say it doesn't matter. If you guys are not experienced with power tools, I'd rather you do in reverse. It takes a little bit longer. If you got a sharp hole saw, it's going to cut right through this plastic. But doing it in reverse, you're going to have a lot less chance for um, uh, accident in that, okay? Now after you cut those holes out, last thing you want to do is clean these things very good. Take them outside, rinse them off, wash them off get all these little bits of plastic off because those things will get not only in your pump but into your sprinklers and all of these little sprinkler heads will clog them up really easy so you want to get all of that out all right now that's it now we'll go outside and let's put it together first we're going to put the base down if i need nice level ground i put a couple pieces of slate here i leveled it out first uh, you want this to be level, otherwise wherever it's spraying, all the water is going to go to one side. So make sure you get your ground level. And if it's on dirt, make sure you put something under it like a, a cement slab or uh, I have slate. Just any, anything that's going to be nice and level and solid. Alright, so when we put it together, now it's skim off the top. If there's any little bits of plastic left, like we said, you know, any of that stuff can get into your pumps. You don't want that. So get that off the top. Attach your tubing to the pump. You're going to use an adapter. Now this pump had a half inch tubing adapter. I just took that adapter up to the hardware store and found a tube that fits. So they have this tubing that was half inch inner diameter, 5 8 inch outer diameter, and they've got the little adapter that screws right onto the top of the pump. 
it's a half inch fits just fine so you want to put your adapter on your pump slide your tubing onto the adapter and drop it into the nutrients into your first bucket now go ahead and make sure that the cord your wire your power cord is going out through that notch now we're going to take our first bucket that has a lid attached to it and we're going to thread that tubing through it and set it down on top of the first one and snap it into place now if you guys want to you can go through and take your handles off but I chose to leave mine on for right now because I some people said that these things weren't that sturdy so I want something if I need to attach it to the wall or a hook or something I wanted something that was still holding on to it so I left my handles on um, you can take yours off if you want I'm gonna let mine go it's raining right now so I'm gonna see how this thing holds up in the wind alright so put your tubing through your second bucket snap that one on too and then from here we're gonna see our last bucket goes on top the nozzle is right here so here's where you can go ahead and give you a little bit of, bit of leeway and go ahead and cut your tubing and just slide it onto the adapter and like I said this one's got the elbow in it so you want to make sure it doesn't crimp but I changed that out to straight fitting that I found later on so we don't have to worry about it so if you can find a straight fitting much better all right and then just snap this one on too got the last little fitting is just going to screw right onto that see there so that just screws on there like that all right we're all set the lid goes on the top and we're all set go plug it in and see if it starts running all right so you want to go ahead when you first start it up you want to go ahead and look inside and make sure that your sprinkler head in the center is spraying out to where all of the holes are and that it would hit all of them and this is where you're going to see if it's setting up straight if all the water is pulling to one side so just check and see if it looks all right listen you can hear the uh, nutrients trickling down in that and what you can do is pull out all the pool noodles and you can see if there's nutrients actually trick trickling down and if you've got it all trickling down on one side, you know that there's a problem. It's not level. You're going to have to like adjust your spray head or the tilt of your grow bucket. So that's it. Now I'm going to plant. We've got some kale that we're growing in our downspouts. You guys know how we do, right? So we've got kale that's a couple of weeks old. And what we're going to do is transfer them over. You can see they've got, you know, the regular roots on there. And they've got a bunch of nice air roots on them. So we're going to get these and put these in. If they're coming from the ground and you pull these out of soil, rinse them off and you put them into something like this, they're all going to be limp and laying over the next day. Uh, it might take a while. Some of them might get stressed. Some of them might not come back. Some of them might. Um, but I like the downspouts. It gets the plants used to being in a moist environment. It gets them used to being in the hydroponics. And when you move them into something like this, it's not that drastic of a change. And they seem to do very well. All right, so it's raining right now. We're gonna see how the tower garden goes. I didn't know that was gonna happen. I didn't know I was gonna plant it out and like two days later, we're gonna have a, a awful storm out there. So tune in next time, see if the tower garden survives and I'm just gonna let it go. You know, right now it's getting rain in there. The nutrients gonna be a little off probably, but hopefully with the, the lid on the top, the um, pool noodles in each one of them, kind of closed it up and it won't get too much uh, rainwater into it. Now if you guys grow inside of the downspouts, you can just take the pool noodles, you can take the plants out and put them right in here. Now I'm switching them over to a smaller pool noodle because remember we had a two inch hole that are in our downspouts that we usually do. This is one and three quarters inch. It's a little bit smaller so I'm cutting a little bit bigger wedge out so I'm making a tiny bit smaller just so I don't squash my plants. I think that a lot of you out there have a problem like that, that you're squeezing plants too hard. And I'm going to put a couple in at an angle because we talked about that and some of you asked me about that and said please show that. So we're going to put a couple at an angle and see how they do. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We built a tower garden. Uh, it's ran two days. It's doing excellent right now. Like we said, we've got the right size pipe, the elbow. The little sprinkler head and that on there this is kind of the best setup that i see you know like i said 
if you can't find these little screw on adapters and all I have is a pop-up you can take it apart I took that one off the sprinkler out and then I just siliconed it all together you can do that but if you don't have to this is much easier it's just getting a little spray nozzle like that if it gets clogged up you can reach in there pull this off right take that rinse it out it's got a little filter on it right there and then come back and just screw it right back on so tune in next time it's like really pouring right now we're going to see how the the grow tower does i hope you guys enjoyed this i enjoyed doing it and if this works out man we made a grow tower that's going to hold 30 plants and it was only 68 dollars so that goes back to the the materials like we said we're going to talk about the materials and why i chose the ones that i did because you could get the square fence post those are about thirty dollars i think for a five or six foot section um you can get the pipe like we're going to get the four inch sewer pipe but each one of those when you go to put it in it won't stand up on its own even if you drill a hole down the center of the lid and you set it in it's still going to want to lean so you've got to get some kind of structure here and a lot of you guys have given a lot of input on the last video like say go check out our last video i'll link it up there so there's a lot of people have given input on what um, their experiences and, and help a lot of helpful hints in there so um, I chose to just stack the buckets because then I didn't have to worry about the the tilt and trying to support it some way so you stack these buckets together I put four screws in it and it just held on these things have got a handle on it so it's up against the wall I can put a hook on there if I want I can put three hooks if I need to um, and I got a lot of plants on there so if you have like the four inch tower going up you're gonna fit you know three or four plants you know around each section and down so this one we fit you know up to five on one line and five on the next so we've got 30 plants in there I think it holds a little bit more so I'm really enjoying this you guys let me know what your thoughts are, are on this do you think it's gonna do okay and uh, we're making a few more of them if you guys think there's some modification that you would like to see go ahead and let me know and we'll give something else a try all right get out there stay dry stay safe lift inspire keep on growing and be the change we'll catch you next time